Okay, I'm back with a follow-up vid, guys. It's the same transmitter, the Redicus. I've taken the screws off. We're just going to do a little reveal. And there it is. So, it's pretty interesting that there's so much empty space there, as you can see. I removed this. This was covering... The QN8007 inside of that little Faraday cage in there. There's the QN8007 right in there. Um, I really like how they did that. That isn't necessary, but it's nice that they did that because, like, on a real VCO transmitter, um, having a cover over the VCO is a normal thing to do just to prevent interference but on the Quintec chip it's not really necessary because it's just a, a chip it doesn't really have a VCO that's very sensitive um, but they did it anyway which is really good I like how they did that um, you know I've seen other transmitters that don't bother to do that and that is very nice that they did do that um, as you can see here, it looks like they're using a chipset, a motherboard chipset heatsink. Um, that's what that looks like to me. Uh, so the one watt transistor, I think I see it right there, is right there. I don't know what it is because I'm not going to take that off. But um, so they're using a microcontroller right there. You can see they scraped the name off of it. But. From what I can see, it appears to be an ARM STM32, which I find very interesting because this thing is simply controlling that Quintec chip and the screen module right there. So that's all it's really doing. I think that chip above the microcontroller might be another smaller microcontroller for the screen. But I'm not sure about that. But either way, I'm very interested that they bothered to use an STM32 microcontroller for such a simple chip. Because the, the Quintec could be driven by an Atmel, a super cheap Atmel, or a PIC chip, or an STC. I see a lot of the Chinese uh, transmitters feature an STC microcontroller. Um, I think they're very cheap. You know, there would be cheaper options. So I find it interesting that they went with an STM32. I guess it could be because of the Bluetooth option, but I'm not sure. But anyway, let's address the Bluetooth. This is very interesting. So you can see they've got a Bluetooth antenna right here, right on this ribbon cable, which really doesn't seem like a good idea at first glance because I mean you're basically putting all of the RF from the Bluetooth into the lines that go into the the transmitter chip and all of that stuff because the power supply is in the back everything related to power and audio comes from the back and it's got a nice relay there which I found interesting I'm not sure why they needed that because it's so low power I would think that power switch would be enough to provide it, but anyway, they put this antenna right on this ribbon cable, which at first I was thinking, very, very bad idea, but I think I realized why they did it. I think they did it because they're trying to couple the um, RF of the Bluetooth into these output connectors, or I mean these uh, audio connectors. So I think they're trying to couple that signal in there because otherwise none of it would be getting out of this case because the case is, you know, like a Faraday cage. So I guess that is how they're trying to get the signal for the Bluetooth out of the box is by actually putting it through the audio lines. I'm not sure about that though. If you have a better idea, post down in the comments below because I'm not really, really not sure why they're trying to do that. Because it doesn't seem like a good idea to be putting that on top of the 
uh, supply voltage for the um, Quintec and the microcontroller and all that, I would think it would cause problems with that. Or at least cause noise. Behind the ribbon cable right there, you probably can't see it because there's also that black wire right there. But behind the ribbon cable right there, there's an onboard antenna that looks like it was originally the Bluetooth antenna on board right there. And see that little piece of metal right there? See that right there? That's a trace that they actually peeled up. They cut it and peeled it up off the board so that it would disconnect. So they disconnected the onboard antenna and then soldered on, you can see right to that uh, capacitor right there, they soldered in this external Bluetooth antenna. So I found that interesting. What they must have found out is that when they had the signal being radiated directly from the PCB right there, it probably wasn't coming out of the case. I've got plans. I'm going to put an amplifier in here. I saw one comment um, suggesting putting a, a 15 watt, I think, amplifier in here. I'm probably going to end up putting a 30 watt, but if it doesn't fit, then I'll put the 15. Uh, I found a perfect 30 watt amp online that is, um, it's 13 centimeters. So right there. Okay. So it would be that long, and it's 4 centimeters wide. Okay. So it fit like that. It would go in this space here. And what's really cool about it is it's a duct. It's got a, a fan on the end and it blows through it. So it comes with a heat sink. So I think I'm just going to cut a hole in the side of this right here. And then I'm going to have it ducting the air blowing out the side through the heat sink. And I, I really like those ducted heat sinks where it's a square. Because then all the air is flowing right through it from the fan. Whereas when you have those heat sinks that are flat, like that kind of heat sink, if you put a fan up on that kind of heat sink, it doesn't blow that much through it. And it's, it's not as good. So I'm going to try to put a 30 watt amplifier in here. But if I can't, uh, we'll try to put a 15. I, have, I already have the 15. But the 30 watt is on the way, so we'll see what happens with that. One thing that they should add is this Quintec chip has a digital audio input uh, that is, you know, completely noise free because it's digital audio. It uses I2S digital audio. And I really think that they should utilize that. You know, put a little USB port on the back. You could put a USB port somewhere there with an I2C sound card and lead that right into the Quintec and then you'd have, you know, perfect, perfect sound with no noise at all. And it wouldn't really cost much more to do. And the chip itself comes with that feature. You don't really have to do anything to make it work. Clearly, there's plenty of room for an amplifier, so I don't know why... Um, this company isn't selling bigger models of this transmitter with an amplifier on, in it. Maybe they plan on doing that, but it seems like it'd be obvious. It'd be an obvious thing to do. Also, it should be very, very easy to get rid of this F connector if you want to put a BNC in here instead. Because as you can see, it just uses an SMA pigtail. So you can look up BNC pigtail on eBay and just replace that if you want to. You might have to enlarge this hole a little bit, but otherwise that should work just fine.